I'm going to show you how McMush works. The first thing you have to do when you're testing, the te having students test for an unknown organic molecule in the McMush, the Happy Meal, like Paulette was talking about, the first thing you have to do is show them what a positive test looks like. So th the lab sets up with uh, a positive test for you to show. So that's what I've got here. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, the first test is for a monosaccharide. To do a monosaccharide, use dextrose. This is the solution of dextrose. Just add some dextrose to the test tube. It says to use uh, five mils, I believe it is. Any amount will work, uh, just so long it's about like that. Then you add to, to add three mils of Benedict solution. Benedict solution, you can have the students measure out three mils of Benedict solution. I just have them put drops in it until it turns a nice blue. Let me show you what that looks like. That's a nice blue, and that is Benedict solution mixed with your monosaccharide. Okay, at this point, you have to heat up the Benedict solution. To do that, I use a hot water bath. That's this blue thing here in front of me. In it, I have a test tube rack, and I just had the students put the Benedict solution and the glucose into the test tube rack. It, you have to have the water, the hot water bath has to be close to boiling, not maybe not exactly boiling, but close to boiling, and, and then you wait. While the, so that is the first test. Okay, while we're waiting for the Benedict solution, the next test is a starch test. The part two is a testing for starches. You make up a starch solution. In this case, I made up a starch solution beforehand. Another way you can make up your own starch solution is to simply take some water and some spray starch and just spray the water with the spray starch and you'll get a nice starch solution. Of course, you're familiar with the test for starch is to take Lugol solution. They call it Lugol solution. This is iodine potassium iodine. And the positive test for the presence of starch is when you add the iodine potassium iodide or the iodine solution to the starch, the solution will turn blue black and that is a positive test for starch. Looks like that. Coming back to our glucose, our monosaccharide test, if you take out the test tube, it's been in there for, oh, two or three minutes. You can see that it has turned, the blue Benedict solution has turned nice bright orange. That indicates that there's a pretty good bit of sugar in the solution, uh, which ought to be because it's dextrose after all. If you have a lot of sugar in the solution, if you have a lot of monosaccharide in the solution, then it will turn bright red. If you have less, it will turn green. If there is none, it will stay blue. So watch for, watch for a color change, even if it just goes to green. It doesn't go to this nice bright orange. If it's, it goes to green, it's still got a, that's still a positive test for the presence of monosaccharide. Okay. The next test, part three, is a test for proteins. It says to place five milliliters of gelatin into water and make up a solution of the gelatin into the clean test tube. I didn't happen to have the gelatin. I left it on top of the refrigerator, but I did happen to have some albumin, so I made a solution of albumin and put that into the test tube. The test, of course, for proteins is to use Biorets solution. So you add some Biorets solution to the protein. Do not do what I just did, which is to recover it. And the positive test for protein is for it to turn purple. And that is that indicates that this is a protein solution. This is a, this is a solution that contains protein. So when you're testing the McDonald's solution, if it turns purple, it's got protein in it. Okay. The last test is for lipids. Lipids are insoluble. They are nonpolar molecules. The McMush test uses Sudan 3, which is this red solution. 
when you make a solution of lipids, you take a lipid, and I just used vegetable oil, and add five milliliters of vegetable oil and five milliliters of water, and mix that up pretty good, and then add the Sudan 3. I believe it's 10 drops, and mix that pretty thoroughly. Now there's two things that you can point out to the students. The first thing is the Sudan 3 turns a pink color, like Pepto-Bismol. You'll also notice that there is a layer of the Sudan 3 on the top and water is on the bottom. Lipids, of course, float on the top. Water will sink to the bottom. The Sudan 3 reacts with the lipids, not with the water. That gives you an opportunity to talk about the polarity. Water is a polar molecule and lipids are a nonpolar molecule. You may have some students that say, well, teacher, if you add a red solution to anything it's gonna, and dilute it, it's going to turn pink. So just take and add 10 drops of the Sudan 3, and you'll notice it really doesn't turn pink compared to this one. Let me hold them side by side so you can show the students. There's a definite difference between the two. This, the one on this side is water alone, and the one on the right side, my right, has the lipid in it, and it has the pink, and you can see the separation between the polar and the nonpolar. Sudan 3 reacts with the nonpolar, not with the polar. After, you, after the students have done what they know is a positive test for each of those macromolecules, the next step is to use the McMush to get the McMush and have them test the McMush for each of those four different molecules. To do that, you need a blender and a McMush Happy Meal. You can let students use their imagination. Some students may want to bring in a breakfast from the morning's, from the cafeteria, from the morning's breakfast. Uh, you can get a McMush Happy Meal. That's what I suggest that you do. Do not use a Coke uh, as the Happy Meal uh, soda you need because the Coke, of course, will hide the color of the Benedict solution. So you need a clear uh, sugary soda solution. So get, get it with Sprite or something else that is light colored so that you can see the changes. Then you will set up four different test tubes. After they do the positive test, then they will, you will give them a solution of McMush and allow them to test each one of those for the presence of those different molecules.